Uh, good morning, everyone. I am Desa Puteka Komala Dewi and my partner. I am Ida Bagus Ketut Sanjitra. Today, we will explain about our project that is assessment of IS or IT governance of UPTTIK with domain APO. This project is the form of an assessment of the IS or IT governance of UPTTIK Undiksa using one of the governance frameworks, namely COVID-2019, especially in the APO domain with the APO subdomain 01205. So APO stands for Align, Plain, Organize, in which there are subdomains and each subdomain has various activities or activities that must be assessed. Using the COVID-2019 framework, we interviewed the head of UPTTIK Undiksa to find out which COVID-2019 level they had by giving some questions that have been provided by COVID and answered with what percentage of progress has been implemented. When all the questions have been answered, we can measure the level at which UPTTIK Undiksa is. In this project, there is a scope, namely an, namely an assessment of the IS or IT governance of UPTTIK Undiksa using the COVID-2019 framework, especially on APO01 to 05. The first is APO01. So the APO01 is a subdomain of a consistent management approach to meet corporate governance require requirements, including a governance component. Second, APO02 is a subdomain of assessing an organization's digital transformation strategy and delivering the desired value through a gradual change roadmap. The third is APO03 is a subdomain of assessment of the representative of the different building blocks that make up a company and their interrelationship and the principle that guide their design and evolution over time. APO04 is a subdomain of assessing the achievement of competitive advantage, business innovation, improving customer experience, and increasing operational effectiveness and efficiency by leveraging INT development and emerging technologies. So the last subdomain is APO05. There is a subdomain of assessing the optimization of the overall performance of the program portfolio in response to individual programs, product and service performance, as well as changing company priorities and demands. So the next explanation will be explained by my partner, Sandy. Okay, thank you, Desa. I will continue uh, about the scope of the project. This project used two assessment methods, namely yes or no, which focus on has the activity been carried out, and the NPLF method, which focus on how or to what extent has the activity been carried out. Then, the value of each activity will be imputed into the COVID-2019 tools. Then, the value for each the subdomain will be calculated so that the tools will show the level of achievement of each subdomain. Then, the schedule of activities for this project is May 31st. 2022 the project is announced may 31st to june 3rd translates the instrument on june 4 we ask for the correctness of translating the instrument 
on June 4 to June 29, we interviewed the head of OPT TIK Undiksa. On June 11, held discussion related to the project work process. On 29 June to 1st July, making project documents. On 1st July, project submissions. In this project, we don't need to spend money, so the cost calculation is no cost needed in this project. And then the target of every milestone or schedule. The target for each schedule are 31st May, what projects need to be made. 31st May to 3rd June, the instruments have been translated into Indonesian. 4th June, the instruments have been validated. 4th to 29th June, the result of interviews with the head of OPTTK Undiksa. In the middle of that, previously on June 11, we had a discussion with the lecturer. From 29 June to 1st July, completed the project into documents. On 1st July, the project was completed and submitted. So that's all for our presentation. Thank you.